Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 513. That's 513 with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Amazing. Good to hear. How am I? You know, as per usual, putting one foot in front of the other and trying to do the best with the time I have available. Also resources, you know also friends well you know what i mean you know what i mean if it's your first time check out the show via youtube you know what to do smash a like hit subscribe leave me a comment down below i'd love to hear your thoughts feelings and suggestions of course if you're listening via the podcast app a five four three two one star review will help really 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 would help spread the show so if you're listening through the apple podcast app then please make sure you leave me a review i've seen a bunch of reviews on there already you guys are smashing it thank you so much for the reviews i'm greatly greatly appreciated Maybe I should check and see what the last one actually said on here bitch bash bosh download area yeah 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 we know the download area we don't care do we let's see what my last review said on here on my phone come on don't hit me up okay see all oh, last review was on the 30th of september so someone can do another one that'd be grateful guy said here yeah, man of the culture guys his finger on the post keep it up man i really appreciate that that's from felix f123 so if you could leave me a similar review it doesn't have to be a five star it could be a one star like oh this guy sucks just do whatever i don't care just interact leave me a review i'd be greatly 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 appreciated and of course support via patreon welcome to our patreon.com fortress agostino bonus content on there uploaded every single week so definitely make sure you tune in there that one dollar one pound per month is tiny 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 fee for loads of loads of content so make sure you get on there jump support can you jump and support or jump in there with support or support and then jump in there regardless of really where you do it get involved get involved but yeah here i am i'm back again back again with a hot new podcast giving you the content that you deserve right bang in the middle of your eyes and i hope you enjoy this lovely show we have for you today loads of random topics today nothing really makes sense please bear with me it's a bit of a slow 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 news week in general so um i'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of some of these bits of content but some things i'm really interested in some things i'm not so interested in so i hope you shall um just join the ride regardless um many interesting topics actually in some of them there's some good kind of threads to kind of pull on so you know let's not kind of bury the lead too much let's just dive on deep another episode of the excellent english episode number 513 i welcome you into my humble abode glad you're here with me let's get it going in it let's get that thing going let's not bury the lead any more than we need to bury this blood clot lead so first things first off the top off the top right is this news courtesy of the business of fashion regarding one of my favorite fashion magazines growing up vogue paris i know you guys are probably thinking agassino i didn't know you read vogue yeah been into fashion for a very very long time um i think i've got a weird introduction to fashion i don't think anyone else has a similar introduction but i kind of got into fashion majorly through the streetwear route obviously because I was into skateboarding into streetwear into collecting sneakers then that opened me up to kind of getting into magazines which then opened me up to get into fashion but actual fashion fashion like runway stuff um like luxury houses and whatnot I got into that which is again strange to say this but during the time that I started reading the Sunday Times which might have been when I was in like sixth form I'd buy the Sunday Times obviously it's a big broadsheet that you get on the Sunday it's usually about two quid loads of different kind of papers in there business finance or finance whatever financial sports um home whatever and they had a little pull out magazine in there like a style mag right and back in the day when I used to read that shit I think at the time if I'm not mistaken, that also might be the magazine that actually made me want to go to St. Martin's, right? The reason why I went to St. Martin's in the first place was because of this style magazine. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure of it. So in this style magazine that was in the Sunday Times, that was the era when this guy called um, Matthew Williamson, not Matthew Williams, the sack, Givenchy, but this guy called Matthew Williamson, if I'm not mistaken, was the kind of the toast of the town, right? He was a big um, designer at the time in London, similar to maybe like a Craig Green, right? He was the one everyone had their names on lips. Maybe even before that, maybe he was a little bit before that. It was around the same era like Christopher Kane was popping up with those t-shirts and shit. I think I was around that sort of era. But regardless, I remember he had a really good interview about how he basically made it in fashion and he spoke really highly about St. Martin's and that's where I kind of got in tune about taking um going going there and obviously doing product design which i obviously studied in st martin's but 
my interest in fashion in general came from that magazine. I kind of learned about different brands, learned about different designers, different interviews were had on there, different sort of expo, different sort of editorial type of stuff was done on there too. Um, different well, editorials, mostly in terms of photography, but also different features, um, looking at legendary designers like Martin Margiela and stuff, like little things that just kind of gave me little threads to pull on and get interested in going forward. And then I stumbled across Vogue Paris tools, like my maybe first or second year of uni or something. And then I just completely fell in love with, you know, um, Vogue Paris during that time because I was again during the era when um, Karim Reutfeld was the editor in chief and this lady called Emanuela Alt who obviously went on then to spearhead um, Vogue Paris was also kind of working in tandem with them together and they kind of formed this amazing duo they took great style street style pictures again during this whole era of street style pictures Scott Schumann this Scott Schumann is his name right the sartorialist he was coming up during that time as well and then you just seen these powerhouse French sort of like fashion editors who were basically the toast of the town this is before bloggers basically became a thing maybe it was around the same era as brian boys were popping up or whatever it was just great right they put together this magazine called vogue paris it kind of in my opinion encapsulated the entire energy um that kind of revolved around paris fashion week and it being obviously the kind of you know the the number one um fashion week for people to attend had the best designers um you know most of the big business was done in paris during that time as well so it just was provided for myself like a kid that was in canning town in the hood or in ends do you know what i mean just living a completely different life it provided like a little bit of an escape route it provided a little bit of a opportunity to see how the other side lives the possibilities do you know what i mean it opened your horizons all that kind of good stuff you know kind of expanded my palate and my taste level and whatnot so it was really really good prime and again i think that was also during a time when Tay Richardson was also doing a lot of editorial for Vogue Paris around that time too. This is of course pre cancellation when he was hot fire, when he was you know hotter than fucking fish grease. This was what maybe even this might have even predated American Apparel terry richardson but regardless really amazing so whatever fast forward to now it looks like condé nas has confirmed that vogue paris is no more which makes sense because recently as i said on my channel emmanuel alt stepped down or was fired or left whatever you want to call it and then the rumors were kind of rumbling in the background especially mostly on you know forums like fashion sport and stuff talking about how they were going to do a major restructure because i think that the warning signs were there already because some other lady from i think maybe Vogue China or Germany or one of those kind of ones I think she might have kind of had a bit of a rant online when she left and then that's what people kind of piqued people's interest about oh shit something's happening at, at Condé Nast and this I think was also before the stuff that happened at um what's that cooking show channel before the drama that cooking show channel I forgot the name of it that's under the Condé Nast umbrella before that stuff happened some lady at some other Vogue got basically fired and got told to skedazzle and then she went on a bit of a rant on instagram stories which led everyone to thinking oh there's going to be a reshuffle and then obviously then you know loads of other editors got pulled loads of other magazines got closed down and then they're kind of rejigging everything and now they decided to go with the vogue france thing instead of vogue paris which is a bit strange considering again in terms of fashion weeks and in terms of the the role that paris plays in the overall fashion calendar is very much so um it's 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 kind of it kind of goes hand in hand with Vogue, do you know what I mean? And also, in general, like Paris doesn't really represent France in terms of fashion. It never has, it never probably will. It's the same way how, you know, London doesn't really represent the thoughts and opinions of regular UK people, right? You will, you obviously saw it with um, flipping Brexit, right? There was definitely a uh, skewed narrative in terms of what people were thinking about the EU and stuff, basically, because most of the media was London centric. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do and how they basically pivot, um, how they explore um, what they feature. I've got a feeling it's just going to be the same old, same old. Nothing's really going to change. It, there won't be any sort of kind of highlights being put on, you know, designers from like Lyon or Marseille or these other places. It will just be the same old crap that they, they, they did previously but again it's just a sad day in history really the confirmation of the change um of course the Emmanuel alt kind of you know um resignation kind of put the fire in the coffin but this is obviously it obviously you got a headline here courtesy of business of fashion but then directly from the horse's mouth you got here Vogue Paris become Vogue France. Um, it says here, our up and coming issue launching in November 4th explores the redefines the cultural richness of France, advocates for both individuality and community and the power of diversity and inclusivity. Mm, let's see. 
Um, we are excited to share the details of the coming days and weeks, and we can't wait for you to see it. That's one of the criticisms people had with Vogue Paris in general, right? Especially when Emmanuel Alt took over, because for whatever reason, I don't know why. I, I really, really would love to know why. But these two ladies fell out. Something happened between them, Emmanuel Alt and Karen Roitfeld. Obviously, Karen Roitfeld is the lady with the dark eyes. Right, this one here with the immense eyeshadow, and this is Emmanuel Oyo on the left. They were kind of an amazing power team. Something happened between them. They split up. They kind of fell out as friends. Karen Roitford then went on to launch her her fashion book, which is a bit shit. The fashion magazine that CR Fashion, what is it, CR something like that, right? Um, she does that, and then Emmanuel Oyo stayed, and then kind of became the editor in chief of Vogue Paris, and then from then. In actuality, even though I'm a fan of Emmanuel Alt's styling, I think it basically died a slow death in it. Death of a thousand cuts. But I would love to know what actually happened between the to two of these girls, uh, the two of these ladies. Um, obviously not girls because obviously they're way older than me, so I show a bit of respect there. But the two of these ladies, if anyone knows what happened, I would love, love to know. I actually remember having a zine. I don't know if I still got the zine. I had the zine that was what someone made. Um, of Emanuela Alt street style because she was an icon back in the day like these people used to go crazy for the things that she used to wear which is pretty interesting when you consider how crazy people's street style is nowadays right people are peacocking and wearing unnecessary crazy nonsense and she's just strutting down the street in these what Saint Laurent YSL maybe um, stilettos kitten heels and shit right just kind of you know standard shit that you'd see a chic lady wearing in the streets of Paris but these were these sent people gagging like of course they look amazing here in the furs and shit but these girls had street style in a flipping stranglehold in the headlock let's just say <laughs> but for whatever reason they broke up they, they're not friends anymore they've fallen out not sure where it is i would love to know if anyone has the news or the gossip let me know in the comments anyway it continues here it says the freedom, the freedom to dress as you like, to think differently, to put on all the colours on your nails, your hair, your cheeks, to proclaim loud and clear your identity, to celebrate your differences. The first issue of Vogue Paris will pay tribute to and celebrate individuality, a passport to oneself, to assert oneself. Now, to be fair, to, to let's, let's be serious, right? Let's be real. If they give me a diversity issue of Vogue Paris that looks like a Fenty runway, I'm going to laugh because I'm pretty sure their office looks nothing like that. I would love to see what their office looks like. You know that picture everyone takes a piss out of Virgil where he's like with his Milan off-white team, which is, again, is a little bit harsh because it's the team that's based in Milan. And Milan, Italy, for the most part, I would imagine is predominantly white. And I'd imagine that industry, especially in fashion, is maybe predominantly occupied white people. I don't know. So it was an unfair characterization of how he does business. But in general, I would love to see the magazine and how it features people. Imagine you know, trying to be inclusive, but diversity, different body shapes, and then who actually works in the office week, day to day, week by week. I bet you there's no correlation. Because I do remember seeing a video, a video um, on Vogue, I think it might have been. Was it in Vogue? It might have been on Vogue. That fucking, what's his name? That that guy that doesn't necessarily do anything. Um, was it Derek Blasberg? You know that kid, right? I don't know what he does. He just wears denim jackets and looks like a squirrel. He made some video where he basically went to the Vogue Paris office, I think. And he was kind of be an intern with Emmanuel Alt and the office, you know looked hella white which again not an issue don't have a problem with it but it's just funny that you know how they try to purport to be inclusive but then when you go to the office it's just full of the same looking people i remember i remember that i had the same revelation when i happened to be outside the vogue house which is in central london where i think the old studio of um, the old offices of vogue were and i was just on my bike there kind of catching a break and i didn't know where i was i just was happened to be there at the exact the two princes happened to be there at the exact same time when the fire alarm went off and all these women came out of this building and i was like jesus first of all i was like oh god man like you know all these hot girls coming out of this building then sooner rather than later after a while i was like wow man it's weird that they all look the same like they all look like version they all look like they all look like really pretty girls from like notting hill or if for instance like you know Boris Johnson's daughter, that sort of kind of girl, that kind of like, you know, frumpy looking girl who kind of just happens to be in all agencies, all studios, you know, like, there's that kind of archetype. Then the receptions are these amazing places and they're terrible at their jobs usually, right? It's a bad nepotism. Those kind of girls just get funneling out, like funneling, funneling out, brunette blonde, brunette blonde, brunette blonde, brunette blonde, token, token black girl, brunette blonde, brunette blonde, token this, token. But that was it, just continual, like, you know, conveyor belt of the same looking people and I was like oh no wonder this magazine was in trouble and I think this might have been before Edward Innerfall took over and I think then obviously things have changed a little bit now but that was a I was an indication of like okay 
Vogue is like, you know, they're in trouble. They're in big, big trouble if they're going to continue hiring the same people. And no wonder the magazine's gone so stale. So you continue. Anyway, let's go on. Because creativity, culture, art, and fashion are everywhere, there are great vectors, what are vectors of inc inclusiveness and diversity. They've, they've said that many, many times, this thing, isn't it? From Paris to Marseille to Lille to Strasbourg, um, our, in our identity is not born from a single place, and Vogue represents the best out of the emerging talents and voices. We'll build in 100 years of defining cultural history, but meet the moment we're in now, and most importantly, reflect the fat France that we live in today. Do you think this is going to extend to the fashion weeks? Do you think there's going to be, do you think Vogue has enough pull to change what the title of the fashion weeks are so instead of it being a paris fashion week it'll be like a france fashion week that'll be interesting but it's also hilarious that they're saying this because i don't have i don't think i've read a paris fashion week where they featured designers from other parts of france anyway it's always been people like you know from the glitzy side in terms of paris and all the people from abroad but you know our becoming issue launching in November 4th embodies this manifesto, explores and redefines the culture of richness of France, advocates for both individuality and community. Da, 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 da. Yeah, but you know, you know the deal. So, yeah, Vogue Paris is now Vogue France. Let's see what I want. Let's see if it works and saves a magazine that was already dying anyway. But, you know, here we go. You got to do what you got to do to try and rescue things. I get it. I bloody get it um then make a short note on this picture of i don't know again if you listen to the podcast app i do apologize but there's an image here i have on screen of adele taken by the legendary photographer alistair mcclellan um you know of course you know fantastic photographer plus they're definitely one of our best here in the uk or the great british isles and she looks fantastic she looks amazing obviously adele um looks incredible but Again, not to stress about this because, you know, it's not that big of a deal in general. But is there a, is there a, at least an acceptance? Yeah, is there an acceptance and a realisation that sometimes or most of the time, most people, especially when it comes to women, because, you know, how, how their weights can basically fluctuate. And the fact that if you drop a couple of pounds, you can change sizes, you know, you can go to like two to three sizes really quickly. There has to be an acceptance, if you're a woman, that losing a few pounds is drastically, drastically going to improve um, how what you look like, your attractive, your kind of attractiveness, and also your kind of overall inner confidence. Because it looks as if since Adele has lost weight, she has not, there's not a camera that she's seen which, that she's not wanting to pose in front of. You know what I mean? Of course, she's running up, you know, she's trying to market an album um you know get back into the swing of things it's just a whole new world that she kind of stepping back into from the time that she did her previous album you have to be a little bit more engaged you have to be on social media do all these kind of things i get it but there is no denying that part of her weight loss has been amazing too has been this sort of inner confidence has given her of course she's always been a confident girl i think if you look at her other album covers they clearly show that somebody who was aware that their face was you know top 10 top level so she always kind of let it be known that you know i am pretty i may be a bit fat but i am pretty so every picture you saw of her she looks amazing makeup was always done right so for sure she knew what her assets were but there's no denying since she's lost the pounds, since she's been able to keep it off consistently, which is, again, the hardest thing to do, especially if as a form of fighting myself, I know how hard it is to go from losing weight to then trying to keep it off, especially if you've been a fatty most of your life. It's just difficult to do. But there needs to be an acceptance that this just looks better. It just is what it is. And again, it doesn't denigrate people who don't want to lose weight, who want to stay the size that they are. That's perfectly okay. But for whatever reason, we're living in a society now where people want both things they want to they want to be praised when they lose the weight but they also want to be praised for being the weight that they are if it is bigger like they want both right or they or they want or they don't accept when people put like um what would you call it traditional beauty standards on them in terms of kind of what people are regularly into and again that's not our fault i wish we could live in a world where you know all sizes were appreciated but for the most part you know, most guys, most people in general do prefer people to be of a certain size, a certain shape, whatever it may be. It is just is what it is. And the other funny part of it I was thinking about too, which kind of doesn't get spoken about too often, I guess because it hits too close to home, is that if you think about the unfair beauty standards that exist in the world, especially the ones that are being purported now, especially the ones that are just being pushed now, especially the ones that are probably the most toxic, they mostly come from women. It's other women basically promoting 
you know horrible things to other women in a way to kind of make money but obviously again to kind of damage their long-term mental health we think of stuff like diet pills um diet lollipops and shit skinny teas um those bands you put around to work out around your waist that do fucking nothing um you think of you know cosmetic surgery all these crazy things that people do they're usually other women doing to themselves right of course you'll say some people would argue say yeah but they're doing that for the male gaze but really and truly men could be convinced to like a certain thing more than the other like for instance guys i grew up with in school you know back in the day would would have said oh if a girl has a bum like beyonce they're not going to date her because the bum's too big right it was like a sign of fatness nowadays you know a girl that looks like that couldn't you know couldn't walk down the street um two minutes without being hollowed at or let it be known that people like what she looks like do you know what i mean people's tastes can change over time you know as the kind of um as maybe the, maybe it's the internet as well because we're seeing different types of shapes of women wherever it is whatever it is i'm just saying guys can be convinced really to like whatever whatever because for the most part guys aren't really choosy they're not the one choosing they're the ones just accepting whatever's given to them unless they're jason momoa or something right so it's just interesting that 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 just to kind of observe from afar because again me not being a fan of Adele's music um, at all and thinking it's pretty much garbage and maybe she's quite overrated as an artist but there's no denying that she looks stunning now like legitimately stunning like she always has looked stunning but she looks way way better now that she's lost the weight it just is what it is and i think most people would if they could lose five to ten pounds would look incredibly be incredibly good but it's also it's less about what you look like and also what it does to your inner confidence i think people say that a lot when you when you work out i know i've had the same thing most of my kind of you no know, desire to lose weight and desire to be fit over the history of my life has mostly been to attract more women and obviously to wear designer clothes right those have been my surface level shallow sort of reasons why i wanted to lose the weight but then when you start doing it and you start getting into exercising and you start loving the feeling of these endorphins all this whatever it may be and it's adrenaline all this sort of stuff right you start getting high off the exercise what you start to realize is that it's actually a great kind of um it's actually a great sort of personal thing it's sort of like a great little therapy thing that you go through as well where you start to kind of love yourself from the inside more from more so from the outside even though if you dropped two dresses even like for me i went from being a 38 waist to like a 36 to being like a 35 34 and then you're like a 32 like oh my god i can't believe i'm wearing these jeans that i never wore before in like seven years or something like it blows your head but then it's actually nice how you feel inside about yourself do you know what i mean how you've kind of proves yourself that you can do something that's incredibly difficult which it is don't let anybody denigrate weight loss weight loss is really difficult it's probably one of the hardest things to do in your life like hundreds hundred million percent and the fact that you kind of stuck with it and you lost whatever it doesn't matter if you lose five pounds the fact that you can you can now button your shirt up that way or this like all those tiny things that you notice like wow and it makes you feel 10 times taller it makes you feel it, it just it gives you a confidence that you can't never buy it gives you a confidence that no amount of mdma coke you know red bull anything will give you this is the inner confidence that you get usually from losing weight which doesn't really get spoken about too often because it's you know like i said it's what well, some reason is some sort of weird taboo subject people don't like to talk about but again big up adele she smashed it she looks amazing this is an image of her taken of by alistair mcnillan from vogue november 2021 issue if you want to check out yourself it's from this account called couture is beyond on twitter so if you're listening to the podcast app you want to know what i'm talking about it's an account on twitter called couture beyond couture spelled c-o-u-t-u-r-e is beyond i-s-b-e you i-s-b-e-y-o-n-d or one word on twitter check the link it's amazing or just go on my twitter feed i've retweeted it on my feed you can check it out as well if you want on that regard but yeah she looks fantastic man she looks fantastic moving on we have news here courtesy of the verge everyone's been talking about this i don't know why i don't know why anyone really cares because i think it's a fucking dead app and i don't give a shit but hey here i am got a podcast need to talk about these things facebook has changed the name of their company for some reason i was led to believe that facebook was changing the name of their company but it said what they're doing is they're 
making the company name the the kind of the name that kind of oversees all the apps that they've purchased into this new name but then facebook still stays because i thought they're changing the actual facebook name but they're not so anyway it continues mark zuckerberg is on why facebook is rebranding to meta right it says for the first time in 17 years mark zuckerberg has a new job title on thursday he officially became the ceo and chairman of meta the new parent company named for facebook so all those other brands like whatsapp instagram and shit that they have will just live under meta instead of living under facebook the rebrand is about to again i'm just saying this because i only understood it now i didn't get what was going on because for the longest time i thought they meant they were going to rebrand facebook and everyone was thinking i was because of all these hearings people are having all these flipping whistleblowers are coming out and exposing facebook for doing the exact same thing we know facebook have been doing for years and years and years but it wasn't actually it was something else so he's trying to explain who knows whatever it continue Zuckerberg is staying in control of everything of course he is he told me in the interview that unlike the founders of Google who stepped aside in 2015 when it became part of a holding company called Alphabet he has no plans to give up the top job which makes sense isn't it? he lives to work he works to live everyone that I've kind of read who's kind of encountered him he's a bit of a weirdo but essentially he's an incredibly high high level operator so it makes sense that if he is the one steering this flipping behemoth this tanker around he should stick around as well to ensure he gets the next level it continues instead the change is about recognizing a shift inside a company that's already been taking place zuckerberg has been pouring billions of dollars at least 10 billion this year alone into building the metaverse an expansive immersive version of the internet taken from the pages of the sci-fi movies like snow crash and ready player one i think we're basically moving from being facebook first as a company into being metaverse first he told me a week over the phone and um, while details are slim the unified account system is going to be introduced on to span all countries social media apps the oculus quest headset portal and future devices this means you won't need a facebook account to use quest which is i don't know i don't care but he continues rebrand to meta announced by zuckerberg today at the company's annual connect conference has been a has been a clandestine affair since he formally kicked off the project just over six months ago the small handful of employees involved had to sign separate non-disclosure agreements. Zuckerberg refused to tell me the name itself when we spoke on the day before Connect. He said that he had been thinking about a rebrand the company ever since he bought Instagram and WhatsApp in 2012 and 2014. But earlier this year, he realized that it was a time to make the change. And I think for whatever reason as well, they probably had to get all those other things in place like Instagram accounts and website domains and shit. Because people do do the thing where they kind of forgot what it's called is it parking domain park i've got there's a term for it where if somebody's trying to do a rebrand i think they did the same thing with the redskins right because they've meant to change their names because it's a politically incorrect name so somebody i think found out or basically registered every iteration of whatever name they're going to have um and now basically they're in a position where they can't pick the name they want because the guy basically your guy or girl is essentially trying to extort them or blackmail them into paying millions and millions of pounds to get this name so if you're facebook and you want to get this meta name you're going to try and do it all behind the scenes no one knowing so that you can work on those things without people finding out i get it it says yeah i think that there was just a lot of confusion and awkwardness about having a company brand also be the brand of all the social media apps i think it's helpful for people to have a relationship with a company that's different from the relationship with any specific products that kind of subsides a soup so that's kind of supersedes all of that which again i'm not i'm not i don't mind i i'm a big fan of people having aliases i'm a big fan again that's why i'm in love with flipping people like hiroshi fujiwara nigo um you know John Takahashi, all these kind of legendary Japanese designers who you look back into in their future in their archives, and they have many different brands, different projects, different side hustles they started and just ended abruptly, or changed the name of, or evolved into other things, and then those things then become kind of collectible. They have a little bit of a lore around them, a little bit of a story, and the same thing goes for this Facebook rebrand. I mean, it just creates mystique, it creates intrigue, it kind of refreshes the brand, it gives people a new direction to aim to. It's all kind of interesting. I like it. I like it, but I don't care. Zuckerberg knows that the timing of the rebrand is suspect. Over the past weeks, the company has been um, hit with non-stop barrage of criticism thanks to the leaked internal document provided to the media by a former employee named Francis Hogan um, or Hagen Hogan. Facebook is perhaps the most scrutinized company in the world right now, and its brand has soured in the eyes of young people to many of its critics. Distancing the company from the brand and Zuckerberg from the Facebook will be seen as an ev evasion tactic, which it might be. But to be honest, considering how much people, considering how much the media seem to have a stick in their ass about facebook um they're not going to let that no one's going to forget it anyway and jeremy and those hearings are going to live in people's memories forever man mark zuckerberg you know 
maybe that's how you have to be as well there's always an element of that and i think i saw somebody about it earlier like if you're going to be really successful in one field it's very unlikely you're also going to have the charisma of a will smith do you know what i mean he's obviously paid to be an entertainer he's paid to make people laugh make people smile but if you want to be a shark in the ceo world you're not going to be kevin hart I mean, you're just not. Obviously, he's got an element of it in his life, but in terms of being a shark businessman that's going to be able to kind of, you know, go into a town, strip a business, you know, fire a bunch of people and then kind of start it back up again and sell it for billions and billions for way more, way more than you bought it. You have to have a level of kind of coldness and cutthroatness about you that wouldn't allow you to be a Kevin Hart. You can't be, you can't be emph empathetic or em emph emphatic, whatever that thing is, um, to people and still do business in that way. So that's probably explains why Zuckerberg is so weird when it comes to having human interactions because he legitimately spends all his time on the computer. He doesn't probably even believe in human. I think if you actually sat him down properly, he'd probably say he doesn't even believe in human interactions. Do you know what I mean, he might be a little bit like, you know, these things are overrated. Let's move to a metaverse, which is obviously he's creating right now. Um, according to Zuckerberg, the current cycle of bad news had nothing to bear with this, had nothing to bear on this, even though I think some people might want to make that connection. I think that's sort of a ridiculous thing. If anything, I think this is not the environment that you want to introduce a new brand into, which is true, but it's a calculated risk. And you know what I mean? And these entrepreneurs, for the most part, are high risk gamblers so it took a calculated risk it's basically paid off loads of free press um and everyone's kind of wondering what the metaverse is the metaverse is an idea isn't new but it wasn't thrust into the mainstream conversation until zuckerberg started talking about it publicly earlier this year the concept originated from snow crash a dystopian movie in 1990s in which um, people flee the crumbling real world to be fully immersed into a virtual one that sounds like absolute hell to me while we acknowledge that the origins of the word are con um or oh, Zuckerberg is trying to reclaim the metaverse as a utopian idea that will unlock an, an entirely new economy of virtual goods and services. The funny thing is the metaverse would have worked or would have been received far more um, happily pre-pandemic, right? Pre-pandemic, everyone had this vision of the world being, you know, via Zoom or video conference maybe not zoom maybe just video conferencing in general and just kind of connecting people digitally and you know collaborating on the phone all these sort of kind of like non-face-to-face -face contact stuff but then once we were in the pandemic and we were locked down and we were denied the ability to touch and feel our close family and friends just kind of hang out and have a beer people started to realize or started to kind of appreciate just how important human connection was do you know what I mean? And then stuff like the metaverse and all that sort of stuff kind of dwindled and people started to look at stuff like Black Mirror and get horrified instead of just being entertained. It then it then became suddenly that genre of TV and whatever it may be became straight up horror movies. People couldn't imagine a life where you'd just be sitting at home watching streams all day. Do you know what I mean? You needed some level of human interaction, human connection. So it's really interesting how the public consciousness or the public willingness to kind of, you know, um, commit themselves to a life in the metaverse has basically dwindled post pandemic or during the pandemic in the next decade he thinks most people will be spending their time fully immersed no they won't Three versions of the internet that spans not just the metaverse hardware such as quest but devices made by others he's pushing these teams to build technology that could one day let you show up in a virtual space as a full colored avatar full bodied avatar um, or appears as a hologram of yourself in the real world living room of your friend who lives across the planet why would you want to do that why don't you go visit your friend? Like, it makes no sense. Um, and take some snacks across with you. Or maybe bring some back to give to your family. Like, why would you want to... Anyway, it, it, it's absolute bullshit. Of course, in places like San Francisco, maybe silicon valley specifically um you know the coastal cities new york maybe some people would enjoy that but i honestly do think people have learned to appreciate just in how important it is just to be able to go down to shops around the corner and get a sandwich do you know what i mean to be able to have a cocktail to be able to have a little bit of a boogie watch a movie all these sort of things that you probably took for granted and thought you could just do at home all the stuff on uber east the same things like no actually going to a restaurant from time to time is actually quite cool it's actually quite nice it actually makes you feel good to be served to to be able to kind of make someone's night by giving them a big tip like all these little things that you don't get to do you know on the on online are never going to change that way but yeah um let's continue on and this bit here he says he's careful not to get into details but he believes that there'll be a pretty role sorry pretty important pretty important role for crypto technology like nfts and smart contracts in metaverse one of the big questions that people are going to have about virtual goods and metaverse is do we do i really get to own this thing he told me or is it just um content that someone has basically just takes away from me from the future and i'm pretty sensitive to that and will give all the pressure sorry i'll give all the pressures that we've had 
to try to navigate around the censorship what's the definition of something that's harmful versus when you have to get into the way of people being able to express something yeah again i don't i don't give a shit about all this shit man. i think it's an absolute horror show and a nightmare and if anything it's a dystopian future that this guy's trying to bring about onto the world that most people are going to reject and push back on so i'm happy about that from what i've seen to five one online has been like now nah, go fuck yourself so that's been a good, good place to go see people are just not having that sort of vibe at all which is good which is good which is good next on the list here what else do we have here to talk about let's move on from that let's not do this do, 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 do. Oh, bear with me one second bear with me one second what else did i want to talk about here come on load 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 my computer's being a little bit of a b i t c h B I T C H B I T C H B B B I T C H T T T C H. Bear with me. Say okay, cool. It's not there. Let's move on to something else. Let's go to this. Oh yeah, let's go to this. Actually, um, it looks like one of my favorite clubs, um, Robert Johnson is maybe potentially reopening very soon they put together a very cryptic instagram um series of instagram posts here three of them one saying hey hello one saying inhale excel and the other saying we are ready for the floor um if i'm not mistaken robert johnson was one of the only nightclubs especially of the big popular ones that didn't do many live streams i think they might have done one and i'm, I'm not even sure where it is i haven't even been able to replay it anywhere if you know where it is and you can find it let me know it might be on their facebook account i'm not too sure but i didn't see it on youtube but they didn't do any live streams anywhere and again it's really disappointing they didn't do that because robert johnson is one of the most beautiful nightclubs that exist in the world right it's definitely rated very highly i've been there myself i went in 2015 if i'm not mistaken i forgot the page yeah yeah that went to 2015 in march i went to this this weekend there on the 5th of march 2015 i saw um rarish and priscilla play obviously kind of you know the guys that come from the school of ricardo verlo but especially rarish he's got the mannerisms and the style of dancing very very akin to a ricardo people basically call him like he's basically you know copying him but i don't know maybe it's just like a coincidence who knows and i also saw arm play there too um, if i'm not mistaken arm is a resident there so is um gerd jansen and people like that that are kind of discovered through that yeah of course you've got gerd jansen there who also play people like Zip and shit so um for the most part it's a fairly house centric nightclub um which is kind of um, different for germany for the most part you would think of germany you think of techno you think of that sort of music but frank i'm um, sorry um, robert johnson is known for having really great djs play in terms of mostly house music it's also again one of the most world renowned um nightclubs especially for its sound its layout its location it kind of overlooks the kind of river okay a river a lake over that you kind of see where the smoking area is you can kind of look over during when the sun sets it's open all weekend um they're very picky on the door still by getting in again a brilliant a brilliant brilliant nightclub the only thing i remember of it being a bit sketchy was i went obviously this is the kind of one of the first times i went kind of abroad to go clubbing on my own so about six years ago right so i went and when I went, I didn't really know how to do the thing properly. And obviously, when you go and travel and you go to these nightclubs, it's probably advantageous, especially if you're going to go to places like Germany, to try, especially if you want to go during a weekend, to probably try and do a late Thursday or an early Friday departure and then try and come back, if you can, on the latest plane on the Monday usually or if you can afford do maybe the tuesday morning because usually their parties run from basically friday night all the way till monday morning there's a series of parties happening somewhere around there and of course if you go to place at berlin or Bergheim specifically on the saturday that party runs all the way until monday morning so if you can stay up as much and you've got the endurance you can stay up all the way until monday so it's probably beneficial to try and get the last train or the last plane out on that monday night or to try and get one in a monday morning so you just fresh and obviously take an extra day off and you can come back to work maybe on a wednesday and i didn't know that so i just went on the friday came back on the sunday so just flipping bad bad news and also i didn't know that the flight that leaves london the one that i took which is an easy jet one i think it doesn't actually land in the center of frankfurt it sort of lands on the outskirts kind of similar to like gatwick in, in london right or even not gatwick maybe luton's way 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 far and the bus journey is like an hour to get into um the city center 
of Frankfurt and then of course I didn't know much about the city I just kind of I think if, I, if I'm not mistaken I found out about Robert Johnson through basically RA when RA used to be good they had this amazing feature about Robert Johnson and I think about um, Atta who runs it and about all the cool little merch things they do and you know flyers and shit just re a really cool feature on Robert Johnson I remember reading it thinking oh this is awesome and getting really inspired and I read other interviews of other DJs who spoke really glowingly about the club and I just went I didn't know anything about the city nothing and when I went there and I arrived I find out it's a flipping the financial district of basically um, the financial capital of Germany. And it's also a very different city to Berlin, like completely different. It's basically full of skyscrapers and shit. And then on the other side or right next to it, there's loads of whorehouses and shit, loads. So like where I've stayed in some hostel, I think it's like a generator hostel, one of those ones. Basically, you know, you, you look at one side, there's loads of really shiny kind of banks and buildings and whatnot, right? And investment firms and shit. And on the other side, there's a whole row of basically whorehouses. And then on each side road of the whorehouses, there's loads of crackheads in there shooting up and shit, just looking awful. Like crackheads I've never seen. Like, you know, those proper zombie ones, not the ones we have here in London that kind of look all right from afar. And when you get up close, you can basically see their hollow cheeks. But these are ones you can see from afar that were really struggling. And I didn't know if there's, there's a big drug problem there obviously loads of issues with you know um what you call it with sex work and all that stuff no you call it would you even call that sex work what would you call that you'd call that a version of people smuggling in it probably um those guys out in front of the door who basically call you over say stuff like, hey man black boy what's up man what's up man you from london come in you want some fun like i don't know that kind of like you know i be for sort of calling over for you to come in i'm like i'm not about to pay 50 euros to have some you know girl that's probably 16 grand on me or something i'm not having that from the middle from you know from what you call it from Eastern Europe, it's not going to be a vibe. So that was a real culture shock. That was a real kind of waking. Oh, whoa, Frankfurt was nothing like this other place I've been to. But the club itself was just beautiful, 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 beautiful club. I really recommend you check it out. The sound systems are quite incredible. Um, where it is, walking up the stairs to go and try and get in. Um, the people at the door were lovely. Uh, the drinks were well priced. Like just a incredible, incredible place. I've met a lot of Brits over there, of course, as well. When I went in there, it was just an incredible vibe. I really, really liked it. So, yeah, rumors are or rumors you know this post basically proves that quite possibly the, sh the club's going to reopen can't wait obviously i'm in my kind of techno tourism you know or dance music nightclub tourism vibe again so i'm definitely going to visit very soon and i recommend if you're a fan of dance music and you love nightclubs and you want to go to somewhere a bit different um you want especially in germany you want to have a different vibe and you especially if you're a fan of places in germany like palomas and shit right where they have a little bit more housey sort of vibe and it's not so dark and techno-ish like all the other places definitely recommend you check out robert johnson um and again they've got a great store they sell great merch they've got great little books and stuff they have like just it's one of the better 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 run places i think so definitely check it out if you haven't definitely check it out if you haven't um what else we want to talk about here let's move on we got that we got this we got that oh yeah let's talk about this this is flipping crazy and it's kind of broke just recently actually over the old um wire and it kind of made me laugh of course it shouldn't because it's family drama that shouldn't be made public but again you know we live in trash times and this is quite possibly one of the trashiest publications that ever ever graced the earth so tmt has reported here that yolanda hadid claims that Z zayn malik struck her he adamantly denies it if you don't know who any people are zayn malik of course um former member of one direction um a pop star and singer in his own right who is in a relationship with um, this girl on the right who is Gigi Hadid um, the sister of Bella Hadid the model girls and you know they're a bit of a couple I guess an internet hit couple I guess and they've got a kid and the mom is well known because of her exploits in terms of kind of raising them to be models and whatnot I don't know whatever right they're just well known on the internet and for whatever reason this news got leaked to a place like TMZ and now it's become like a big topic of discussion on social media for whatever reason, I guess, because, you know, Zane's pretty um, laid back, sort of private dude, don't really hear much about him, he doesn't really give interviews too tough, he makes his music, releases it and just keeps it moving. And then, of course, you know, they've kind of decided to start a young family together. Um, they seem like they're madly in love and they seem like they've got a good little family unit on. So probably when people saw the news, they're like, oh, my God, this is mad. But a part of me thought this is kind of swaggy in a way right again it's mad to say this i know but hear me out right <laughs> hear me out if you've legitimately got beef with your mother-in-law 
especially a mother-in-law that you've never liked i think most dudes out there have secretly wanted to just thump their mother-in-law just not even like repeated blows just one just to kind of remind them that they're talking to somebody that isn't their son that isn't related to them that only knows them because they happen to go in out with their daughter and they need to kind of mind their business and just kind of respect the space that they're in and usually i'd imagine mother-in-law's disrespects usually come in your own home that's what usually makes it sting the most right it's not that she kind of insults you or questions your manhood or talks about how ugly you are or whatever right in her own home because you know you have to kind of accept it it's her house her rules but she comes into your house and she disrespects you <laughs> that's when you kind of get a little bit pissed off i could definitely understand it i could definitely understand it. again do i condone it of course not but i'm sure a lot of married folk out there a lot of people with you know partners that they've kind of had children with and shit that they're co-parenting or they're trying to do this whole like new age thing where you're not married you're just living under one roof and have a kid i'm sure a lot of them have kind of thought to themselves you know what i would love to just give you a quick that at the back of the head a clip around the ear a little pinch on the arm just something to remind you that i'm not to be played with and maybe this is what zayn malik did and again he seems like a pretty laid-back dude whatever but i do remember there was a clip going around earlier on during the pandemic of someone that was meant to be him in new york with his top off looking a bit frumpy to be honest it looked a bit strange that he with his top off he doesn't look as great but hey i'm not judging suppose he got into some sort of argument or some sort of beef with somebody on the street i don't know what happened and you know he didn't seem like he was prepared to throw the hands let's just say that right he seemed a little bit scary at when i saw the video so um maybe he's known to have a bit of a temper i don't really know not my business but it's just funny that this stuff is made it onto tmz because again they're not that high level of celebrities that it would get it, it was a thing to report on so it's definitely it feels like a thing that's come from the mother-in-law side where she's kind of had nothing it's like you know what i'm gonna end you and if there's one thing that you can do to end a man in public especially when it comes to hollywood and the whole entertainment industry sort of thing is anything that contains violence towards women whether it's because again struck what does struck mean struck is a weird term it's struck like uh, open hand I guess striking somebody is closed. I don't know what it means, but it's a very loaded, ambiguous, vague sort of term, right? It will do all those things in one. And it immediately makes people think that you're a woman beater. Immediately. You don't even have to be guilty. It's already in their head. And those kind of things like the R word, they're incredibly hard to shake, especially if you're innocent. If you're guilty, then you deserve everything that's coming at you. You know, get thrown underneath the jail, whatever. No one cares but your family will miss you no one will miss you but when you're not guilty when you're innocent and you're being kind of slandered and you're being defamed and someone's trying to ruin your reputation on online it's basically over it's a wrap you just have to kind of let it go whatever it goes um but yeah let's read the article itself quickly here it says yolanda claims zayn malik struck her last week last week she said so she's only pointing now she's wearing a little sick balenciaga jacket looks like there um and she's seriously considering filing police report sources with direct knowledge tell us it's not sources it's her telling you that our sources say yolanda says it happened at some point last week we don't have the details of what she claims triggered the alleged assault but we're told you'll understand by account she came to say Malik struck her it's interesting that someone could hit you a week someone could hit you last week and you only want to report it now I wonder if she gave him an opportunity to say sorry he didn't he said fuck you you're a bitch anyway la 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 stay at my house you don't pay the bills or something like that right <laughs> and then she said alright cool let's see who, let's see what bills are going to get paid when I put your name out there like so maybe who knows um, Zayn just posted it oh yeah and then continuing on we got this little clip of the mum so you can get a vibe of what she's basically like and it's not i'm not gonna play who gives a shit but basically it's a, it's a clip of her from a show i guess i don't know what show is about where she's basically um telling Gigi how to stay thin and it's a little bit i guess for women it's kind of triggering because she's telling her not to eat this not to eat that and emphasizing the importance of looking a certain way but for me from just a normal dude's point of view if she is a full-time model then you know a proper model that goes on runways you kind of do have to mind what you eat in it because you need to be real thin to fit into these sample clothes so i'm not that bothered about that to be honest but i guess if you're a woman and you're growing up having a mom having these kind of videos sort of like they're kind of maybe triggering because you remember growing up in a house where people were stressing about you know um what you're eating and shit i get it i get it i get it again it's women's business and so i don't really know too much of it but of course that's them looking as a happy couple that's um the mom yolanda in a 
pretty sick Balenciaga jacket. I'm not gonna lie. It is Balenciaga, doesn't it? It doesn't definitely does look like Balenciaga. Maybe it's current season looks fucking fire. You know, she's got that cop face on, right? She's got her Karen cop look on. She definitely made a couple of calls, phone in hand, you know, ready to end someone's life. The game is the game. And then, of course, here via Pop Crave, Zayn Malik posted an apology, or well, he posted a statement, basically kind of speaking from his side of things. And he said the following in the notes app, as you all know, I'm a very private person. I very much want to create a safe and private space for my daughter to grow up in, a place where private family matters aren't thrown on the world stage for all to poke and pick apart. In an effort to, it's too late for that, mate, Yolanda just did not waste any time in kind of burying you with this one. Um, in an effort to protect the space of her, for her, I agreed not to comment. So I agreed not to contest claims arising from an argument I had with a family member of my partners who entered our home while my partner was away several weeks ago. So that's an indication of what may might have triggered it. He might be like, you know what, I hate you, but you're only allowed to come in here when your daughter's here, right? Because, you know, I don't have a I'm not in a position to tell you to tell my kid's grandmother that you can't come and visit. But when I'm in the house alone, don't come anywhere near this place. I get it. And maybe it was the kid there, I don't know, whatever their relationship is. But I'd imagine he's pretty much at home most of the time because he doesn't really go out anywhere. And his music career is kind of on the rocks for the most part. He just does, again, he just puts out stuff that he wants to put out. So maybe that's their kind of rules. And then she popped up, Yolanda, and being the annoying mother, not that she is unannounced, just kind of rare, rare, rare demanding shit. And he was like, you know what? Little quick tump, stay out. <laughs> and then now look what's happened. Um... Da, 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 da. Um, this was and still should be a private matter but it seems for now that there is division there is um divisiveness and despite sorry is it divisiveness and despite my efforts to restore f us to a peaceful family environment that will allow me to what the fuck is he talking about here um let me read it again maybe i'm going crazy this was and still should be a private matter but it seems for now that this divisiveness and despite my efforts to restore us to a peaceful family environment that will allow for me to co-parent my daughter in a manner in which she deserves this has been leaked to the press yeah he doesn't he tries to write like he's you know like he's got great grammar he's really posh and shit but he ends up sounding like a bit you know um i'm hopeful though for healing for our for all involved and with a harsh and with the harsh words shared and more importantly i remain vigilant to protect kai and give her the privacy she deserves he talks about privacy a lot but this is more so you know when you've done something bad and you don't want anyone to know you keep reminding privacy you keep reminding invasion of privacy all these sort of things just to kind of put people off from what you've actually done so yeah it may be that's what it kind of seems like but the privacy thing is too late now mate it's all, all over the place zane tells tmz i didn't mean to deny strike deny striking uh, yolanda hadid for the sake of my daughter i declined to give any further details i hope that yolanda will reconsider for accusation and move forward healing the family in private gg and zane are no longer together and it's been a way it's been that way for a while sources familiar with the situation dr the split happened more than a month ago so that has more context to the situation but it's also interesting because more likely than not even if the mom is a bitch right even if she's a flipping dragon it's unlikely that the daughter's ever going to choose you over her mom it's just not going to happen maybe a, a son could do that to a mom or something cool right even a son maybe could do that to a father but you're never going to get a girl to pick her mom to pick you over her mom if she does if you're a dude that's a red flag if if a girl kind of wants you more than she wants her own mum, that's definitely a bit of a red flag. It has to be said, because you only get one mum. You can find, again, even if it's the love of your life, you can find another one. Um, it won't be the same, of course, but you can find, but you can't replace your mother. So that's, that's a weird one. But yeah, man, what a shitty situation all around. Hope they are able to kind of figure it out. They probably won't. Um, if she's willing to go to TMZ and bury him like this, she definitely despises the guy deep down. And again, maybe maybe there is again in one way where i said oh i'm sure there's many dudes out there who have always, always went to smack their mother-in-law i'm sure there are many mother-in-laws out there who generally think their daughters could do better who generally think that their daughters are wasted on their husbands or their partners it's like what are you doing with this guy he's a waste of space but your daughter can't see it because of course they're madly in love with this person i'm sure that must happen so maybe in her to in her defense you know she would write to kind of you know um to kind of snitch on the guy cop him out do, you know do the old um what, where is she there she is right in the in in a, in a karen outfit you know letting people know you know calling people on the phone stomping around places in new york figuring shit out moving accounts closing this closing that shutting off his netflix and shit you know what i mean all these tiny things she did like but yeah man what a mad situation what a mad situation Let's move on from that one. 
What else are we going to talk about here? Da, 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 da. Yeah, let's talk about this slightly. Yeah, let's talk about this one. Let's talk about this. This is one I want to talk about quickly here. Um, so this is courtesy of UK Gossip. I'm not even going to play the sound because it doesn't need to play any more sound here because it's fucking embarrassing. But this is courtesy of UK Gossip TV. And there's a guy, an artist here in the UK called Schwarms. For whatever reason, he's decided to get fake dreads. And I fucking hate it. Um, I'm not sure why this became acceptable for dudes, especially black guys, to get fake dreads. This was never the lick. This was never the vibe. I think the first person I saw with fake dreadlocks um, publicly, happily wearing them as if there is it's his own hair was maybe Neymar when he had that style that was kind of, you know, he had basically fake dread style that he was rocking for a bit. Again, it didn't last too long because Neymar is, you know, um, notorious for having many, many different haircuts or there many different hairstyles in one year. You know, he switches up his hair million, millions of times, which is great for inspiration if you want to figure out what to have. But in terms of um, some of the hit and misses, they're really high. But this kind of new trend of guys buying or getting installed fake locks in their hair is horrible because what it's just the look that you want to look right to look at rappers how they look nowadays um especially guys in america from the south and shit or to kind of purport to be a certain type of artist maybe kind of gives you a bit of swag it makes you face i don't know whatever it may be but it all it requires is for you to have the patience and the fortitude to just grow your hair out that's all it requires now if you don't have any hair that's one thing but if you have a full head of hair which it looks like schwams is blessed with a pretty decent hairline yeah, judging by this video he's got good waves on him on there right he doesn't look like he's lacking in it maybe he hasn't got a bit of a tash and he has that weird bottom bit um mustache that every black guy seems to love especially the academic type people but regardless he looks like he's got a full head of hair he looks pretty you know it looks okay why not just grow your hair out it's not that difficult to do grow your bloody hair out don't install fake dreads like guys getting weaves and stuff is just I don't know, man. What what world are we living in where this is acceptable? What is this? What is this world? It's just mad, man. I'd never really thought this would be an in thing. It was. I'm sure this was done all the time, but it was done kind of in, on the sly, incognito. Guys would just turn up with a full head of hair. You're like, hold on, how did you go from that to that? But now suddenly, I think I see a lot of people doing it in America. Even Louis Yvette does it, but he's already got dread. So maybe to get some length to change the style, you add a little bit on the end. That's one thing. But to go from having a one level to then installing a forehead or just even a slight afro and then kind of making it look like chunky fucking locks. No, nah, I'm not having it. I'm just not having it. I'm really not. I thought maybe I'm in the minority, but I thought even when Rihanna had that hairstyle where she looked like flipping Bob Marley, I thought she looked flipping stupid. I thought she, there was, I think it was a film, I'm pretty sure. But that ridiculous flipping, you know, dreadlocks hairstyle she had was ridiculous. Like it's all what? Fake hair that you've got on top of your head just carrying around in a dreadlock style. It just doesn't make any sense. Grow your hair out. Or if you can't do it, get another hairstyle. That's it. This whole flipping fake dread thing is just dumb. It looks horrible. It really does. Because what? One day I'm, I'm at work and I see you. Well, well go on, man. We're at work together. We're JDs or whatnot. Whatever we're working. Game flipping. TJ Fridays. Hey, what's up? How's your weekend? And then on Monday you come in and you've suddenly got, you know, Migo style locks on your head and I'm not meant to ask any questions I'm not meant to get a little bit offended I'm not meant to get a little bit heated I'm not meant to say what the fuck are you doing <laughs> I'm meant to just kind of pretend that it's all bless and look how gassed up he is too that's the worst thing too it's not even the fact that he got the locks it's the fact that it's made him it's it, he, he's feeling like a fucking hot boy he's probably playing way too sexy in his head now isn't it that fucking future director I'm too sexy for like, get out of here man like is there anything worse than guys that like, guys who think they're sexy Right, is that, I've, I think I've said it before. Like, what, what's what's worse? Um, what comparison did I make? I forgot one comparison, but there is something entirely different level, different levels of cringe when guys kind of think they're hot, especially the the, the guys on TikTok and shit or those Instagram shorts that start doing the dances. The guys that wear the you know those black boys that like wearing suits, they think they, when they put the suit on, they make some it turns them into Idris Elba. You know those kind of dudes, like bizarre. They put on a double breasted suit and all of a sudden they they fucking James Bond and shit bizarre but anyway those kind of dudes when they get online and start doing the dances or or the one that i saw the cringe one was those kids that were at some festival and they're walking in a line together like guys that are hot and like trying to see everyone's reactions like come on man like you legitimately had your boy hold a camera for you in a crowd and have you guys walking through it all being like tall and look good looking guys and hopefully like get catching the eye of some girls you know higher flipping ket and md and then what what 
what was that going to prove? That, oh, that girls might give you a second look because you look a certain way. And, like, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Guys should never be this um, conceited. It's just not a thing that is ever going to be appetizing. It's never going to be appe- appetizing. It's never going to be appealing. It's a thing that should be left for women, really, right? Women and homosexuals should be the ones that feel conceited because that is part of the name of the game, to look amazing, look good, smell fresh. But just regular straight dudes shouldn't do this because it just comes across super, super lame. And you're always going to be the butt of the jokes of this. Obviously not for Schwams because he's a, I'm assuming he's probably close to a millionaire. He's a you know really well-known guy here in the UK. He makes songs people like, people want to be his friend. So it's unlikely he's going to be the butt of the jokes. But if he was back in school, I'm sure, and he turned up non uniform day in the tracksuit and new dreads like come on come on bruv like you need to have a talk or you, you're you gonna get a thumping not thumping that sounds a bit you know but yeah you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i mean i don't get it man i really don't i think it looks super super dumb but you know maybe i'm in a minority and i hold my hands up if i am hold my hands up if i am Moving on from that, we've got this random news again from UK Gossip TV about a couple called Molly May and Tommy Fury. I'm assuming that is, yeah, that is Tommy Fury. Are victims of an 800k burglary after experienced gang targeted a Manchester flat whilst they were partied. And the only reason why I brought this up because I think in some of the comments, someone said here, like, I'm not going to give these people... Yeah, I'm not going to have people in these comments blaming them for this. If you work hard, you're going to make you're going to want to flex it too. That doesn't mean someone has to a right to rob you, babes, as long as they're safe. This is so sad. Again, I don't get this sympathy people have for people they don't know. I don't get this empathy people have for people they don't know. You know, people kind of celebrating and getting high and happy of the fact that Kourtney Kardashian is engaged or was it Chloe? Whatever, which one it was. It's like, I don't, I don't understand this, but I guess it's a woman thing. And also when it comes to people like this, influencers, celebrities being robbed of their expensive items whilst they party in another city. I don't have your sympathy either because part of the reason why this happens is because number one, you're flaunting too much stuff on social media, which again is a kind of um is a vicious cycle, right? Because in order for them to be successful on social, they have to kind of show off their lifestyle. And that's showing off all their lifestyle and their wealth and their kind of one percenter life and you know the fact that they are kind of privileged in the opportunity to be able to make the money that they're making and live the life that they're living and for whatever reason society has this infatuation with just watching people who are way wealthier than they are enjoy things that they'll probably never be able to attain but regardless that content you need to keep it fresh you need to keep showing people things but then obviously there are people out there that have bad intentions who are also looking at that same content and plotting on your downfall so the 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 the, the need or the drive to keep putting out that content is actually putting you in danger but of course there is an other option where you can live a life where you just you know you're an influencer you do your thing but you're quite private about the things that you have or where you live or the layout of your building or your flat whatever there are certain things that you just don't reveal and that could also be great but people don't want to do that because once you get into the loop of sharing stuff and you see the algorithm go up you see the views go up you can't help but show other things oh here's my new cat here's my new dog here's my new car here's my new so that and it just becomes a vicious cycle until now you're in a point where people can basically trace your every steps based on your instagram stories and that's something that i've kind of learned from people like joe rogan and stuff about the need to be somewhat private in some of the things that you have in your life especially if you live a really public especially if you have a very um especially if you have a very public persona is that word? whatever that thing is right because like myself like i'm on all social media platforms and stuff but there are other parts of my life that i keep completely private and not on social whatsoever and i think that's really important and one thing that's always been important to me is the kind of instagram stories thing of just not having it be a play-by-play of all stuff that you're doing and it's just a little habit i used to always do again i'm, I'm a nobody i've only got like 2000 you know 2500 odd followers or something i'm a no one on instagram but everything I upload on there, it's usually done a couple of hours, maybe even a day later than when it actually happened. It's never done in real time. So I might take some pictures along the way. And then after I've come back to my hotel, I've gone back home, wherever I'm at, then I start uploading stuff. But I'm not uploading it in real time so you can trace and figure out where I am. Whereas these guys most likely have been doing such a thing, talking on their vlogs about um, going to Manchester. What, what did they say? What target did Manchester? Yeah, talking about going to, go, going down to London, right? They live in Manchester um, on their vlogs, in an interview or something. And all it took was a bit of sense to figure out where they're going to go. Maybe it's a branded event. Maybe been marketed somewhere and then just kind of plan your burglary and imagine they probably did the burglary in calm fashion didn't take too long or maybe did to wherever in in a relaxed fashion knowing that they're not going to be back anytime soon right 
and that again is kind of their own fault which is why i don't really have much sympathy for it whatsoever um let's go to the, what's this, uh, the next page there the smile through the storm yeah i guess so um molly mayhew oh, hugh is he saying there molly mayhew tommy fury were victims of a terrifying breaking at their manchester flat with burgers reporting to getting away with 800k worth of stuff terrifying really you weren't even there like come on relax um according to reports an experienced gang targeted their home of course um the couple on the evening of october 21st when they were away in london celebrating molly may's new beauty works collaboration launch cool which was advertised everywhere probably did the live stream something so again only yourself to blame um they will never return back to their apartment again unfortunately they feel as if they've been targeted and don't feel safe there anymore of course that's the side of home burglaries that's a bit out of order but again they have the means to get another flat it won't be too difficult i'm sure they'll be okay um Da, 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 da. an insider's claim that says there seems to be an experienced gang who know um, what they're doing as they have uh, had the machinery and waited for Molly May to be away well duh um, the gang are thought to be smashed through the windows and doors to gain access to the flat and store approximately 800k worth of belongings leaving the couple with nothing other than what was already in their suitcase for the event <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh but is that is absolutely hilarious like you go from having loads of you, you go from having loads of um loads of stuff right loads of probably stuff you don't need um stuff that's given to you free stuff that you bought stuff that you're thinking about selling stuff that you think about giving away whatever you just got stuff in your house and then you come back and you've got nothing but your stuff in your suitcase that must be a bit of a mind a bit of a mind fuck in it and molly's doing well considering the circumstances being very distressing time but she's trying to be positive as possible a rep from pretty little thinker director todd of course because she uploaded a picture of herself you know get get the likes you know capitalize on the on the drama you know you got you you, you got to keep performing and again this is the odd life that influencers live unfortunately especially influences of this kind of ilk you're you're continually having to court you're continually having to court attention you're continually having to go me 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 it must be exhausting again this is why i give a lot of props to people like herself people like the kim kardashians and shit it's not easy to consi consistently keep getting up put your makeup on take pictures of yourself outfits all this sort of stuff arrange photo shoots and consistently put yourself in front of people because you're going to have to keep making up fresh new ways to make that thing exciting make that thing interesting whatever it may be and even when you're going through a distressing time and people have all their attention on you like again i don't know much about the girl i don't know much about tommy free apart from he boxes and he's a brother of tyson fury or i don't know is he a brother is he one of the brothers i think so well they share a, 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 a surname but you have to also capitalize on this attention because people like myself are now paying attention to you which i don't know who you are so that kind of helps to kind of further your brand it kind of helps to kind of get more exposure on you all these sort of things are things that are sort of running through your head so it must be a weird profession to be in where you kind of have to use your pain in order to kind of, it's kind of like a um, it's not it's to a lesser extent it's sort of similar to what happened with that girl that went viral the other day who took a picture on uh, in front of a casket of her dad that just passed away it's like in their heads if you're an influencer that makes complete sense because this is a distressing time i'm going through if you guys see me smiling and happy it's also important to see me when i'm sad and um, my dad just died here's a picture of me standing in front of it with a cool outfit on it's like obviously if you're sensible you're like that's fucked up but in the influencer's head all attention is good attention so again easy way to stop this sort of thing is to not share so much but will they do that obviously not because they want the attention they want people to keep looking at them and again it's a perfectly avoidable thing if you're private and you keep yourself to yourself for the most part this doesn't happen to you but when you kind of again document your every move especially on the stories um especially with your youtube especially with your instagram especially with your interviews you say every detail wherever you're going you give dates and shit it's just you're just opening yourself up for these sort of things and especially nowadays where people you know for the most part burglaries i guess were maybe somewhat down because people were in lockdown and whatnot so if you want to rob these people who are of high value high net worth um well-known people you kind of have to hope that they're away from the country especially with their alarm systems in place you don't want them to be alerted with a phone call and then they're around the corner at a restaurant somewhere and then they come and flipping you know like flipping what's his name is it bugsy malone they come and flipping break your jaw and shit you don't want that to happen so you want to make sure that as far away as possible from the flat where else you're going to go do the thing so again distressing for them i guess but all in all you know you can't really be too you know sad about the whole thing i don't think but you know maybe i'm just me maybe it's just me but anyway that is excellent episode number 513 i'm gonna eave it there for now 
if it's your first time checking out the show via youtube please make sure you like subscribe and all that good stuff if you're listening via the podcast app please leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends and of course join the patreon at patreon.com for just agostino that'd be greatly appreciated as well it's only one dollar equivalent of one pound get involved don't delay don't be you know whatever that word is just get involved loads of good content on there every single week so please jump on there i'd greatly appreciate it and again i'll see you guys again very very soon until then take care peace out